So if the very system that's designed to catch you when you're falling has holes in the net, what are you gonna do about it? What's up my people? My name is Diamond and welcome to the channel. This is where the conversation of money intersects with the real world to help you achieve your financial goals. And today I wanna to talk about the five lessons I've learned during this pandemic. What's going on right now needs no introduction. We all know that COVID-19 has claimed the lives of over 60,000 Americans with over a million confirmed cases. We have tens of millions of people out of work with no pay in their at home under stay at home orders. And I know I'm not alone when I say that. I hope we have seen the worst of this and that we are on our way to a brighter day where we are going back to some level of normalcy. With all that happened, I have to walk away with some lessons learned, with some new information, because if we don't learn anything from this, then it was all for nothing. So today I wanna to talk about five things that I've learned through this experience. The first thing I wanna talk about is how quickly your financial picture can change. We all understand that you can be laid off or fired and that it can affect you or maybe even your entire department or even an entire company. But never in my life have I seen something so massive where we have 30 million people filing for unemployment all within a span of just two months. That's just a reminder of just how quickly things can change. And I know for me, it makes me think past this pandemic and think about when things get better. Because as things get better and we're moving in the right direction, the positive direction, and we're getting back to some level of normalcy, it's like when we make decisions, we have to keep these times in mind. Because if you're making decisions in the good times with the conclusion that times will always be great, it's going to affect your decisions. So thinking about times like this as we're making those financial decisions when things are good, it's going to make us look at it differently and we'll come to different conclusions. So coming out of this, I plan to keep this with me to make sure that my decisions match up to a time like this so that I'm able to make decisions that that's not only good for me when times are good, but also the right move when times are bad. If you got some lessons learned that I haven't mentioned, I want you to put them in the comments down below. And if you haven't done so already, hit the like button for me. The second thing I wanna talk about is unemployment and just how undependable unemployment is. Like we all know that unemployment is a system where the state pays into it, your employer pays into it, and they don't have a choice. And so this is supposed to be your safety net. So if something happens with your job, you can go and file for unemployment and you can get some type of compensation while you're in the process of looking for another job. And what is a better example than the nation going into a state of national emergency and shutting down multiple states, multiple businesses, and tens of millions of people needing some financial assistance because to no fault of their own, they've lost their ability to go to work. They're being told, stay in the house, you can't go to work. And so now they go and file this unemployment. But take a look at some of these states. Look at Florida, for example. They've had roughly a million people apply for unemployment. They've taken multiple weeks to get people the ability to apply. The website didn't work to start with. They rebuilt that. And then it took another several weeks before people were denied. And to date, they've denied roughly 40% of the million people who've applied. And Florida is not alone. There are millions of Americans across the nation waiting for unemployment. So if the very system that's designed to catch you when you're falling has holes in the net, what are you gonna do about it? And that's something that I will be taking with me as I move forward, because I know now that that's not a system that you can depend on. So I'm gonna have to depend on something else. The third lesson is the federal government has proven through this entire pandemic that they are willing to do whatever they need to do to ensure that the US economy is gonna make it. And if that means printing money, let's print it. If that means giving every American $1,200, let's do it. If that means spending trillions of dollars to make sure this happens, let's do it. The Treasury Secretary Jerome Powell has went as far as to say, we're willing to do whatever we need to do to make sure that we come out of this thing on the right side. And there's no reason to think that anyone in our government is going to deny that or is against that. I mean, just look at everything that they've done in just a short span of two months. First, the Treasury cut interest rates a quarter of a percent, then 1%. 
Now they're down to zero percent. They've created multiple programs to create lending and credit programs to businesses that could inject potentially six point three trillion dollars into the economy. They've passed stimulus package after stimulus package. They've added on to existing stimulus packages. The first of which was the CARES Act, and that was $2 trillion, and that's the one that put $1,200 in each American's hand. It also created the Paycheck Protection Act, which was going to put an extra $600 on top of your state-funded unemployment benefits, and it put hundreds of billions of dollars in the hands of small businesses, or it was supposed to put hundreds of billions of dollars in the hands of small businesses. Here's the federal government pumping money into our economy because our economy is like quicksand. And if we stop spending, we all start sinking. So the flow of money is going to continue. And that's great for the economy as a whole. They're making sure that the gears have grease on it and those wheels can keep turning. But how does that impact me in my household? All that's been done. How is that helping me? How is it helping you? And I believe the teachable moment in all this is that we know that our government is going to do whatever they need to do to ensure our economy keeps going. But that don't necessarily mean that it's going to be what you need to keep going, whether that's you in your own personal household or if that's you in your small business. Because let's look at it. The biggest thing they did that had the most direct impact to individuals was sending out a $1,200 check. And like it or not, if they sent it to you and you qualified, I'm sure you kept it because if you send me some free money, I'm going to keep it. Thank you. I appreciate it whether I needed it or not. But when you look a little closer, you see that there are still millions of Americans who are waiting for this $1,200. And when you take an even closer look, you will see that of these people who's waiting, these are our people who are on Social Security, Disability supplemental security income, which basically are the folks who are making the least amount of money in our society. So it's arguably the folks who needed it the most had to wait the longest. And those who did receive it can all agree that if you really lost your job and you really needed some extra money, $1,200 is a great thing. And I'm not going to not take it, but $1,200 is not nearly enough for most people to even pay their rent and put food on the table. So all of this to say that when the government do something, it's most likely going to be too little, too late. And even for those who run a small business, it felt like they had been thrown a lifeline with over $300 billion being allocated for small businesses. But the truth is, again, the people who needed it the most those mom and pop shops were the ones who were left out. So much so that the government went and threw more money at the situation and even gave small banks and credit unions an exclusive window for these small businesses to be able to apply because that money was sucked up by small businesses that make $25 million a year in profit because the definition of small business is not equal. A small business could be a multi-million dollar organization that's on the New York Stock Exchange that's making tens of millions of dollars in profit a year. A small business could also be a small local shop with two employees that's just making enough to pay the bills and get by. So it's easy to see that the needs could be very different amongst these two types of small businesses. And if you can't depend on the local government, if you can't depend on the federal government, then what can you depend on? Well, I think this has taught us all one thing. And that's, we can all depend on ourselves. And we really only can depend on ourselves. And how do you do that? You need an emergency fund. And this is my fourth lesson learned. You need an emergency fund, whether it's for your business or for your personal. It's times like this that show us that the only thing you can truly depend on is access to a pile of cash that's in your name, that you have, that you can get to. Because the state is gonna have unemployment. And then the federal government has stimulus packages and all that is great. But all of that is going to come too little, too late. And meanwhile, you have things that you need to do right now. You have responsibilities. You, gotta, you have to put food on the table. You need to pay your light bill. You need to pay your rent. These are all things that you need to do for your family immediately. And the best way to do that is to have an emergency fund. Because even if there's a virus out there spreading and killing people, if you don't have this safety net in place, 
You're going to do what you have to do because you have this innate instinct to take care of your family. So that means even with the virus out there, you're going to risk life and limb to go out there, do what you got to do to make money, to come home, to feed your family. And that's understandable. But why do we need to put ourselves in such positions? We don't because we have the ability to get our life right and build these type of funds ahead of time so that when something like this happens, we can stay safe, we can stay home, we can take care of our family. And my fifth lesson learned is let's get our financial life right. I mean, we know the statistics. They've been thrown out for years. We hear stuff all the time like 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Even those making $100,000, one out of 10 of those households are living paycheck to paycheck. We know that we have $1.5 trillion in student loan debt and $1.2 trillion in auto loan debt and credit card debt is north of a trillion with the average family carrying a balance of about $6,500 on their credit card. Like these aren't new things. We know these things. And we also know that 60% of Americans can't cash flow a thousand dollar emergency. So what are we going to do about that? Well, right now we're just going to do what we need to do to get through this. But once we get back to it and we get back to work, this is a time for us to take this moment, lock it in and use it as a motivator to drive us to do things differently in the future. Because we don't know what the future holds and Lord forbid we don't want nothing like this to happen again, but we need to be prepared for the unknown. And you may be asking, how do I do that? Well, you need a system in place. You have to learn, grow, so that you can make smarter financial decisions. And that's exactly what this channel is about. Because when times are good, that's when we prepare for a time like this. We have to get out of debt. We need to build an emergency fund. We need to decide ahead of time, can I afford that? Not can I afford that now that everything is great, but can I afford that in my worst financial state? These are the kind of things that we need to analyze and the decisions we need to make. Because if we make the right decisions when times are good, we'll be able to come through these bad times with no sweat. If you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button and ensure that your notifications are enabled because I'll be posting weekly videos to both inform and educate. Until next time, my name is Diamond. Peace.